Okay. I didn't know what was going on there for a minute. <laughs> Wait, don't start. Okay. All right. Well, um, as I was, you know, talking before I had told a couple other people about how I became Muslim, um, you'll never understand the whole story unless I go back to the beginning. And um, <clears throat> like I said, you know, I grew up in uh, Brooklyn, New York, East New York. Uh, some people call it do or die, bed die. It was a pretty rough neighborhood. Uh, a lot of killing, murdering, seen a lot of people die, seen people get their brains blown out. Uh, yeah, bed -Stuy. Bedford Stuyvesant is the area it's called. But for short, we call it bed sty S-T-Y. Yeah, it's rough. And, uh, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm 48 years old, and almost everybody I know or grew up with is dead. I've lost all my brothers, just about. I have one brother left. Lost my sister. Um, woke up one day, and uh, she had taken her life. Um, came downstairs to find her dead on the floor. Uh, I lost my mother and my father by the time I was 22. Um, I've seen a lot of deaths. I've seen, like, I've gotten to the point where I don't go to funerals. Like, I only go that one time and to see you in the ground. And after that, I'll never, ever go again, like, because there's too many people. And it was funny that I found out that as Muslims, we're not supposed to keep visiting the grave. So, a lot of things I did, you know, were very Islamic that I didn't know at the time. Um, but, um, you know, my mom used to drink a lot. She was an alcoholic. And uh, she used to get into kind of fights with people. She used to gamble a lot. She used to owe people money. I remember, I couldn't figure out for a long time where my toys used to go. Because I used to get a nice toy, and all of a sudden the toy would disappear, and I could never figure out where the toys went. And when I used to ask my mom, she always act like she didn't have a clue. So it wasn't until I was about maybe 16 that I discovered that my moms took the toys out and sold them uh, after buying them for whatever she needed the money for. But anyway, one of the things that I used to do to, to try and make my mother stay home, because one night there was a big fight in my house. My mother used to have people over gambling. And this fight broke out and while I was sleeping. I was about, it scared the hell out of me. I was about maybe four or five years old. And they came, I'll never forget it, because they busted in the door and they all fell on top of me. And they were trying to cut my mother with a razor and uh, it, it was kind of crazy so one of the things I used to do to get my mother to sit still was I used to get her I used to get out the Bible and I used to ask her you know mom read to me and I really was only doing it because I thought that because it was the Bible that she would feel compelled to read it to me but as she continued to do that I began to love the stories of the Bible and so I actually began to read the Bible even when she wasn't around. And I became intrigued with the Bible. And um, But I used to have a lot of questions. And then eventually my mother stopped gambling. She stopped drinking. Uh, she started going to church. And But I used to always have these questions. I'm talking about from when I was like, this was a seven, eight-year-old boy. See, I've been a, a man for a long time. I've been living on my own since I'm 13. So I grew up real fast. And um, But, you know, I mean... This is a kid asking, you know, Ma, this doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, why is Jesus God? He never said he was God. Like, and my mother used to get angry with me and tell me, go somewhere and sit down because nobody can answer my questions. But anyway, I always had. This great love for the Bible throughout my life growing up. You know, I hold on. Is it there? The voice is back? Okay. Um, I used to get bullied around a lot as a kid growing up. And uh, one day, yeah, the mic is locked. 
uh, one day when I realized that uh, I could fight, I started fighting for everybody who was oppressed. And, and so that desire to fight for people that was oppressed was just something that's always been in me. And, um, you know, one day I got into this big fight with a gang. And this gang, one up if you can still hear me. Okay. Uh, the gang was the Latin Kings. And, um, yeah, we got into this big fight. They tried to rob me. Uh, no, I'm in New York. Uh, Latin Kings in New York, too. I was in uh, Brooklyn, actually, in Sunset Park. And uh, the, the gang tried to, to rip me off for my money, and I ended up fighting with them. Um, it was about 15, 20 of them, and puncturing my lung. But actually, that's my story, how I actually uh, almost, that's how I was led to Islam. Because after about six months of, I was in a lot of pain. Uh, I lost my job. I couldn't work. I lost my apartment. And... You know, the few family members that I still had alive, uh, I was kind of a powerful person. I wouldn't go to them to ask for help. But um, anyway, the day I got evicted, I was leaving the apartment, and the lady, I had told her, no, I appreciate you for being so nice. You know, you let me stay here for almost six months without paying rent, and I understand that you have a business to run. So I asked her if she can please do me a favor and get some guys to move my stuff to the basement because I couldn't lift anything. And uh, I left with a shopping cart, and I didn't know where I was going. And as I was walking down the street, there was a Muslim brother. He had a kufi on, and he had halabir. And uh, did I say that right, halabir? <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, and basically, he was looking at me, and I was kind of in a bad mood because I didn't know where I was going to stay, and uh, I kind of wasn't beat for nobody staring at me. But then again, I didn't want to disrespect them because I always had respect for Muslims, even though I had never studied the religion. So I didn't want to say nothing stupid to him. But I guess he saw my face, and um, he saw that I was a bit aggravated. So he said to me, um, he said, no, brother. He said, brother, Aki, he said, I wasn't staring at you in a bad way. He said, I want to ask you a question. And he said, um, was you the brother I seen fighting like 20 guys like around six months ago? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, you know, subhanAllah. He, like, he grabbed me and he hugged me. And, like, I just didn't understand why he was hugging me. And uh, at first I was wondering, is he gay? I didn't know what was going on. Um, but anyway, he was telling me that um, that a group of Muslims was watching me that day I was fighting. And that they give a khutbah every week about... Um, courage and they always mention the fight of the brother who fought 20 people and um, we fought for a good 20 minutes it was it was a long fight they didn't take me down too quick and uh, he started laughing and he said you know every time they hit you we would say ah the brother put up a, a good fight but he's down now for the count and I would jump up and yell come on and like we just kept going at it and uh, so the brother invited me to meet with another Muslim brother and we sat down and we talked and he asked me where was I going that night and I told him I had nowhere to go and um, so he told me to come and stay with him yeah it's not fun either <laughs> yeah Salaf I see you uh, it's no fun um, yeah but you know what thing the funny thing was even though they stabbed me I didn't have a mark on my face after 20 minutes of rumbling it wasn't a mark on my face um, I'm a pretty tough cookie. But anyway, what happened was this brother invited me to stay with him. I'm going to cut to the chase. He invited me to stay with him, knowing that I had nowhere to go. Um, that night I slept at his house. I woke up that morning and the Quran was on the table. Yeah, I'm, f I'm originally from New York. I lived there for 38 years. Then I moved to Maryland for four years. Then I moved upstate. Now I'm in Jersey. So anyway, uh, Sunset Park, that's where, oh, what? Wait a minute, Sulliv, that's where I got stabbed. What street? It was on 
8th Avenue. <laughs> yeah, because it's like a home to the late that he said Sunset Park. I don't, as big as Brooklyn is. Yeah, I, where I got stabbed at was on uh, 50, no, what was it 49th Street and 8th Avenue, right down the street from the masjids. You know where the swimming pool is? You, Salaf, you know where the swimming pool is? The big swimming pool that everybody goes in the summer uh, near 6th Avenue? Yeah, well, I got stabbed right on 8th Avenue and 49th Street. Yeah, that's crazy. But, um, yeah, I, I was living in that neighborhood. But there's a lot of there's a large uh, Muslim community. My Shahada thing was right there on 49th and 8th Avenue, the small mosque. Then if you go further up to 59th Street, there's a big mosque over there too. Um, yeah, but that's where I took my Shahada thing. That's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, the brother ended up having a Quran sitting on the table, and. You know, I had checked out many other religions. I had never really checked out Islam. And I started, I asked him if it was okay to read the Quran. And he said, yeah, go ahead. So I started reading it. And when I was reading it, I came across the story of Esau, of Jesus. And I was amazed when I seen that. Yeah, yeah um, I was pretty amazed when I seen that. So I began to read more and more and more, and as I continuously read, I came across a verse. I don't know exactly where it is. Maybe some brothers that know the Quran better than I do. There's a verse in there that says, can't you tell when you're reading something that's the truth? Can't you tell when, you're, when you hear the truth? Does anybody know what, what uh, uh, sort of what ayat that is? Does anybody know? Okay, it's, I know it's in there because that's what that I'll never forget that moment. Um, because that when I read that, no, I'm in New Jersey right now, but I'm going to New York tomorrow morning. I gotta be in uh, Brooklyn at uh, nine o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm gonna take the um, Amtrak into uh, Manhattan at 34th Street. Then I'm gonna jump the. Uh, the F train to um, downtown Brooklyn. I gotta go near the um, near the court buildings, the Supreme Court. I gotta go down there. Uh, it's not actually there that I'm going to. It's like a couple of blocks from there. Yeah, J Street. Yeah, where the, where the uh, Metro train is at. Where the um, I think it's the uh, J Street right there with the headquarters for uh, for the train station. Yeah. Then, but I'm gonna stay in Brooklyn for a while because I wanna go. Um, see my son, my son lives in Flatbush, he's on, um, Continue Road and uh, Ocean Ave, so I'm going to go see her too, Sunset Park, <laughs> Sunset Park, but anyway, let me finish telling you about what happened to me that confirmed in my heart that the Deen of Islam was for me. When I took my Shahada, I remember... I went to the masjid and it was during the time of Ramadan and they were fasting. Now, these people were Palestinians and some people were from Egypt that gave me the Shahada. They didn't really speak very good English, but they invited me downstairs to, to break the fast. They asked me, you know, were you fasting? And I said, yeah. And they said, well, after I offered the Salat, they said, come downstairs, you're going to eat with us. And so when I went down to eat with them, I felt very warm. I felt love. I just knew this was for me. Out that God, no matter what goes wrong in my life, I never stopped believing in the Deen of Al Islam. When I was leaving that masjid, when I was leaving that masjid, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. When I was leaving that masjid, I started crying. And the reason why, yeah, I got the mic locked. Is it going in and out? Is the mic going in and out? Okay. Um, 
I hope it doesn't go out on this part because this is the most important thing. When I was coming out of the masjid, I felt so much love and I knew that I had made the right choice in my life and that my life was going to change because of this. But I remember I was walking out of the masjid and I started crying and the tears ran down my face. And the reason why is because I felt like I was abandoning what I grew up on and I wasn't sure if I was doing the right thing and so the reason why I started crying was I never wanted to abandon God in no way form or fashion no matter how my life might have been I never wanted to do anything that would abandon God and so even though I believed that Islam was right something in my heart just like because I grew up so Christian and always reading the Bible that I started crying and I asked Allah, I said, Allah, please. I said, you know the sincerity in my heart. And I said, only you know how serious I am about this and how much it really means to me. And I asked Allah, I said, can you please do something to show me that what I'm doing is right and that this is the right thing. And I got this feeling it wasn't like somebody spoke to me I'm not gonna say that but I got a feeling that told me to look up and when I looked up the moon took up the whole sky and it scared me and I thought it was gonna fall I thought it was the end of the earth because it was huge and it was flat like a disc and I turned my face away because I was afraid And then I turned back and I looked and the moon was that day and I would never, ever, ever lie about that that happened to me. And some people keep saying that during that time of the year and that year that the moon came so close to the earth um, and that could have been what I was seeing. But... I don't care what anybody says and I don't care who believes it or who doesn't believe it that was my sign from Allah that he knew the sincerity in my heart and he knew how much it meant to me to know that I was making the right choice not so much up in God in the best manner that was possible and when I seen that I have never, ever, ever doubted the power of Allah since that day. And I might have doubt and I might have weakness in faith um, sometimes. We all suffer for that. Um, I remember reading um, one of the hadiths that said that if our faith doesn't go up and down, then we're hypocrites. Because an honest person is going to have those moments where they're weaker in faith and then they're going to have those moments when they're stronger in faith but to have weakness in faith is lack of worship it's lack of worship whenever you doubt something and whenever you wait enough to know that it's right and, and I just want to say that for anybody who is new to the Deen of Al-Islam, I will put my life and my soul on the line to defend my Muslim brothers and sisters. I will die for you without a second thought. I won't even think twice about it because I know that I will be doing the right thing and I know that Allah promises me paradise. So. I have no doubt in what I believe and I don't waver in what I believe and I know that learning my religion was more important than finding a wife because a husband is supposed to be the Imam of his home that I will be able to be a good guidance in her life and so patience is a virtue. Allah said he loves the Sabir. He loves the patient. And you know what we wait for in life and what we have patience for 
we're rewarded for that patience and thank you for letting me share my story. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.